Hallo, hallo und herzlich willkommen zur zweiten Ausgabe von Café Steelpoint. Wir haben Plattform gewechselt, der Ansturm gestern war sehr groß. Danke noch einmal für euer Interesse. Wir sind heute auf YouTube und ich freue mich, dass ihr uns auch hier gefunden habt. Und ihr hofft, ich hoffe, ihr habt jetzt Bild und Ton und das wird auch so bleiben für die nächste Stunde. Einige Leute haben auch gesagt, einem bei einer Sendung, die Café Stillpoint heißt, kann man sich vielleicht keinen Ton erwarten, aber wir würden euch doch gerne beides liefern, wenn wir können. Gestern hatte ich den Erich hier bei uns im Studio. Heute äh, habe ich einen Gast äh, aus Bordeaux, aus Frankreich, und ich habe eine Skype-Verbindung mit ihm. Mein Freund Bruno Ducou äh, ist aus in, in, in Bordeaux und ist schon sehr lange mit verschiedenen Bereichen beschäftigt die sehr spannend sind und wo er auch über die Grenzen der Osteopathie hinausgeht und Osteopathie verknüpft mit äh, äh, Bewusstseinsforschung, Osteopathie verknüpft mit Meditation, Osteopathie verknüpft mit den Emotionen und über, diese, über diesen Brückenschlag, über diese Verbindungen wird er uns heute erzählen. Die nächste äh, Dreiviertelstunde wird auf Englisch sein, wir werden uns unterhalten und danach gibt es die Möglichkeit, dass ihr im YouTube-Chat Fragen stellt, die ich dann vorgelesen bekomme, die ich dann übersetze und Bruno stellen werde. Hello Bruno, we are now on, on, on camera. I think the people can see you, I think the people can hear you. I was just introducing you. And I said that you that you're actually going beyond osteopathy with your work, that you are developing a lot of interesting combinations, looking into meditation, looking into emotions, and I I think that's very courageous of you. I find that many osteopaths, including myself, have worked with with in similar areas, have made similar experiences. But keep keep it separate from their osteopathic and from their osteopathic teaching. Maybe can you tell? Can you give a little a uh, bit of a background about your development as an osteopath? Uh, how how did you get to the point where you are right now? Um, hello, everybody. Sorry not to speak German, you know, again. And I hope you can understand my English. But Raymond is here. And Interim, correct me if you. Okay, no I have need for been, that, Bruno. I've been osteopath for 40 years now, more than 40 years. I started in 1978, and I'm still passionate to look for, you know, and to dig on into the, the roots and the future of osteopathy. And I think osteopathy is a wonderful tool in medical care, in health. Uh, um, community to help people to enhance regarding the health and being an actor, not just being passive concerning illness and with health. Health is the first important element in our life, more than money, more than other part in our life. Health is very important. And these days, that is really pregnant now, what we are living now is in relation with our health. And I think uh, Andrew Taylor Steele and all the teachers we had from Steele had a, a very good uh, element to share about the uh, health. So osteopathy is mainly manual. It's a start with the anatomy. It's an ecologic way of working. It learns uh, the social relationships and all the information that we get to our hands linked with uh, what turned at school and linked with our experience to help her to share, uh, to listen to the body of the patient, to look for the health present. And we are just at the beginning of a huge way of undertaking health. I think You know, the concept coming from Steele, uh, just being interested in the, the beginning of osteopathy is not just, uh, you know, blowing on the eyes. It's mm -hmm. not 
It's more than that. It's just being anchored in our roots and just to be aware of, of the, the beautiful and the fecundity of the concept mm -hmm. we are. So in coming back to that, I, I mentioned that every time Steele started by himself, I think self is the most important part to take care of others. That's me not being selfish, yeah. but starting from who we are. And these days in our world, we are changing a lot, you know, because what happening from outside. And we don't have to be, look for, to be uh, uh, fighting against uh, illness, like uh, allopathic medicine is doing. It's just looking from ourselves, knowing better who we are, and from that place, understand what is health, what is uh, what's happening in our society. It's like we are, uh, you know, revealing, you know, a new reality. And that's what interests me these days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But how did you get there? You, I think you didn't have that broad perspective when you graduated from osteopathic training, did you? Uh, maybe I, maybe I have to to speak a little bit of my personal uh, uh, experience mm -hmm. of life. You know, that I think still also started, you know, from difficult moments in his life. And for me, I think the beginning, you know, when I was 18, uh, I was in a, in a school, in military school, to be doctor in, a, in, the, in boats, in ships, in the Navy. And I was so proud to be there. And I was doing parachutism and a lot of sport, rowing and things. And I didn't pass my exams. Mm -hmm. So I was thrown out of that school. And a few months later, my father got ill. And finally, the doctor said he had a nervous breakdown. Mm -hmm. But one morning, one morning, he woke up pa paralyzed. And in fact, he had a tumor on the wow. brain. And he, at that time, they didn't know about with the uh, MRI and so. And in fact, he had the tumor of the neuro neuroglia. Mm -hmm. And just a few months before, he had a lot of trouble in his family. Me, I was his elder son and I, I was thrown out of the military school. He was so proud mm -hmm. I was in that military mm -hmm. school. So I thought at that time there was something wrong with the uh, medicine was going and just at the moment he died you know, he was buried on my birthday mm -hmm. and that was very strange to uh, at that at that time to be uh, to that uh, burial and at the moment where he died i felt i had an experience you know that i could feel that everything out of me belonging to me it was so different I should have been very sad because my father had just died. Mm -hmm. But in fact, I felt an experience that many people know about death that makes me think that death, death is not the end. Mm -hmm. It's just the opening to a new world we are not aware of. And from that moment, I felt that during this lifetime, we are in the womb. Like we, we are not really born, mm -hmm. I think. And we are in the preg in kind of pregnancy. We know certain things, we hear, we feel certain things, but we don't see the reality. And the world we are in is just like being in the womb of, uh, of our mother. Mm -hmm. and I think after death, maybe, I don't know, maybe we will see the reality of this. And I think these days, it's exactly what we are experiencing too. You have... As human, we have been on Earth for a very short time, and virus and microbes, they were on Earth a long, long time before us. And they saw the dinosaurs, and they saw a lot of seas who went through the Earth and who, who, uh, who disappeared. And you, you, and you, you, think, you think the dinosaurs disappeared of COVID-19? No, they, they disappeared because of a, a huge, uh, how you say, coming from the space. There had been a, 
but it could, yeah, no, I'm yeah. sure you know, for now it's the, the, this virus mm -hmm. is not a win. It's yep. just, it's just a lesson. We just have to learn from this. And I think osteopathy and still spoke of that. Osteopathy has something to do to help people, you know, to enhance them to see the world from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. And all that I think is uh, grounded on the heart and emotions are a way to understand on ourselves what's happening in our world today. Mm -hmm. That's where I come. Thank you. That, that's already leading uh, to the presentation you prepared. Uh, I will, uh, do you want to start or do you want to say something first like, before? No, we, we can chat too, it's okay. You know. uh, well, let, let, let's, let's look at a few slides and if I come up with a question, I'll just try, try to okay. ask you. Okay. I'll have so, to change screens, give me a second. Yeah. I call this presentation Heart and Emotions in Osteopathy. Mm -hmm. Yes, so I put on the first slide this key for health coming from, from the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. you know? And I like this idea that there's no beginning, no end, you know, everything is, you know, in a, in a, like a figure eight movement. Mm -hmm. And that need to be grounded in the, in the, in the tradition and just to be open on the, like the diaphragm open to others. So then I put a, a slide on life. Next slide. No, oh, I don't know. I don't see what you're showing. Uh, but it's okay. There is an image with light flashing. Yes. And then there is one about life yeah. with text. Yeah, life flashing because I think that's where osteopathy is coming. Coming life. And then next. So life, there's no definition. We, we see only effects of life. Perceptions are partially true. Certain ones said information, not knowing. You okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's where, that's where we are. Okay. And, and so I don't see what you're showing them. Oh. But I'm sorry, okay. before before no. it worked. No, no. But, but you, I see you. Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see my desperate face trying to make it work. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. So then, next slide. The life field in the nature. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we are we have to be aware of what's happening in the field, in the nature. We are made of matter, mineral. We follow axes like vegetable. We like animals, we have emotions and we need affective food. As you in human, we are conscious, we have an awareness and all that in a cosmic field. Still next, still said, does nature think before acting? In 1898, he said, when you see the fruit of its work, of the work of nature, you see wisdom of the trees and flowers. You see the intelligence of animals. And I, I do experiences with dolphins and uh, doing osteopathy and dolphins in the Red Sea. Wonderful experiences. And they, we learn a lot from them. And the jewel of jewels is the human being. And still said, you have man, mind, motion, and matter together. Mind is not only the matter. Mind, that means the capacity of thinking. Motion is movement. It's energy present everywhere. And matter is the, the, what we got as matter. And then still said to study manhood is a door to eternity. So human being is a universe made to work and to love in unity. Next. So we are in an open world and osteopathy is a pragmatic way to conceive life. 
The osteopath governs the boat on the flow of life. He doesn't need to use material force, but the potency. That's coming from uh, teachers. Next, I put a, uh, uh, a picture of A.T. Steele with his wife and uh, with people who were doing research it's about natives at that time. Mm -hmm. you know, he spent a few moments, a few years of his life with natives. He could pick their language. He knew how they were treated. And next, there's an article on the IGOM, uh, that the journal you may have, from Rafael Zegara Parodi, and who make the link of the heritage of the Native American on osteopathy. And that's really interesting to see that different heritage we have in osteopathy. Next, still said also that human life is eternal. There's no beginning, no end. Huh? Mm -hmm. He said that in biogenesis. Next, biogenesis is the a chapter you need to read, you know, from Heath, saying that human life is eternal, no beginning, no end. Our physical house helps the union of matter and spirit to consciences in uh, unity. Next. So what we see these days in our earth, you know, the, the earth is changing, is in danger because of the human being. In, I don't know the, the German name from Anthropocene, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, Raymond? Uh, Anthropocene is, is the, the German Anthropocene. word as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the same word? Okay. Yes. You know that there has been a lot of different moments during the Earth where there has been changes. And I think these days it's because of what we are doing that the Earth is changing. And you see this virus uh, attack with the attack of this virus for me is in relation with this. So we need to come back to to be uh, to be right regarding what's happening in the nature. And osteopathy is a really an important way of being in relation with this. And because everything is connected, the biggest illusion in this world is to think that we are separated. We are all rated. Look at now. I'm in Bordeaux, on the southwest of France, and we are. I'm in touch with all of you that I don't see. Next, so the principle that you find the nature is a matrix, undifferentiated nat matrix. Maybe we can go next because I'm going to be sh short. There's a few pictures about the connection between the universe and Earth in a torus. And next, it's centered in the heart. I will come back on this. And then there's a picture of human in a torus. You OK, Raymond? Mm -hmm. And if you see yourself, we are more than what we see. OK? Then the axis with this picture from Alex Gray. Yes. I like. Is, isn't it a lovely book? I really like it. Yes. Sacred Mirrors. Mm -hmm. And then, so we are, all of us, we, we are osteopathy. You know, remember when there has been a, a terrorist attack, everyone were together, and uh, it's still present now. And I put a picture about instrument in an orchestra. Mm -hmm. okay. And so I think I speak of the fifth dimension of osteopathy. That's the dimension we are experiencing nowadays. The three-dimensional biomechanical model was, is the grounding with deductive reasoning and reproductive technique using intention and force from the practitioner. Then a fourth dimension correlates the present moment and the somatosensorial integration, I think, in relation with uh, with uh, quantic physics, you know, and with the di uh, dimension of time, then the spiritualization of the matter in a life field open a new 
subjective dimension that emerge from the dynamic stillness. And this therapeutic awareness, consciousness, is centered on the heart as a way of joy. That's what I believe now and what I want to share and what I try to experiment in my own life. And that's why osteopathy is really a way of life, you know, that I feel, you know, so amazing and interesting. And so I'm so passionate of that. So, then, so, so you would think this spiritualization, this is what you call the fifth dimension? Yes, mm -hmm. I think um, I will, with another dimension of time, I mm -hmm. will come, come back on this. You mm -hmm. know. So that's the next slide. It's from uh, Herm Herman Hoffman, uh, one of the first students of Steele, who said already that the true knowledge comes from inside. And Sutelan said, if you just see someone working or treating, you get information, but you don't get a knowledge. Mm -hmm. So the, to get that knowledge needs to work from inside yourself and to, to be aware of the polarity. That means the male and female part of us, you know, that present. And uh, I can speak a whole day on that. You know, because these days it's so important with the change, you know, thanks to the woman who make the female part that we have all of us inside, you know, uh, inside us more uh, awakened and more present. And that's a really a huge change in our society. And it's good for that. And uh, looking at the techniques in osteopathy, we can say that the male part was the more high velocity techniques, you know, more masculine male part. And now the biodynamic approach is more female part, but all of us, we need both of them. Otherwise, I put a picture about blinders. If we don't see these new ideas, it's like, you know, we stay with blinders. Uh, and so, I will speak of that spiritualization of, uh, that we can experiment through time. There's other dimensions in time. I, I did a, a research uh, at the University of Lyon in philosophy of osteopathy with Jean-Marie Guellet, uh, you know, a French uh, medical doctor and, and doctor in theology. And uh, on my website, if people are interested, you can see that uh, that work. So my my hypothesis, hypothesis I worked on from a philosophical research basis, is to look for what is the therapeutic time in osteopathy. I think when we are working on a biomechanical way, there's a, a linear time, horizontal time, with past, present, future. And mainly we're still on that time, past, present, future. You know, that's a line of time. And in connection with the three direction of space, up, down, left, right, front, rear. Okay. Then the fourth dimension of time, you know, with the quantic uh, experiment is the vertical favorable time, is the duration, you know, from the German philosophers, it's a Dasein. Mm -hmm. Dasein. Dasein, okay. <laughs> and that's the fourth dimension, I think. And then if we go in that dimension, there's an in-depth dynamic stillness, which is still said, uh, Sutherland said it's uh, the doorway to the unknowable part of osteopathy. And uh, Roland Baker said that it was the, just the beginning of the real treatment when it begins to work into the patient. But this other dimension of time for me, which is eternal, mm -hmm. which has no beginning, no end, that's the spiritual part of us. May I briefly interrupt you here? I think this is a very interesting point you're making. Uh, 
uh, how does time feel for you when you're treating? You, you talked about theoretical models, but what is your personal experience? How would you describe that? It's that moment that I call for now following Jim Jealous. I, mm -hmm. I learned this, I experiment this with Jim Jealous uh, and the biodynamic uh, curriculum and uh, f putting words, that's really a challenge. I, mm -hmm. uh, I like the word dynamic stillness. That means the laws of that moment, of that time, are a non-moving moment, immobility, mm -hmm. non-mobility. The, the, the moment where, you know, it seems that nothing is happening, if you're not moving, but at that moment, you feel on your perceptions that things are changing. That means with your, with your smell, you can feel in your, when you're treating a patient at moments, the smell is different. Sometimes it smells like roses. Sometimes it smells something else. You feel that a moment, you know, can uh, maybe it's, it's uh, 10 minutes in your practice mm -hmm. and it feels for you that it was just a second. And uh, looking with your eyes, you see, you know, like if you're not uh, uh, focusing on your patient, it's like you, you see things different in the you know in the presence you can feel that the room is smaller or bigger mm -hmm. experience you know that going through our senses are in relation with what the english called the felt sense mm -hmm. that this sense in relation with intuition and that uh, you can experiment with spiritual uh, uh, way that's what that's my experience you know, and uh, if you're okay with it, at the end of the presentation, we will do that kind of experience, just a little practice on that. Yes, that's lovely. Let's do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, but maybe it's already half an hour, so we. I think we. I think we're fine to go on. Don't worry. Okay, so maybe I can go quicker to the. So next slide, I I put just an idea of the the visible perception field. You know, you see how small it is concerning all the what we can see mm -hmm. from ray to uh, radio to uh, infrared and things. And next slide. So, just can you do an experiment of that other dimension? If you look at at the picture, is it a square or a cube? If you see it's a cube. That means you see in three dimensions of space, you see? And if you see this three dimension of space, it's only your brain who's making that three dimension because on your screen, you have only two dimensions. And even though, if it's a cube, maybe you can see that the, his look is open in front of you or to the back. I can show you on it, but you can, if it's going front or rear, or you can change what you see. You see what I mean? You uh, can. I'm 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 not sure. I'm on the mm. I'm on the image of a statue, nature removing her veil. Okay, so it's before. It's be 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 reality. Before I've got the visible perception field, the electromagnetic field with the small part of the vis oh, okay. visible okay. spectrum. Nothing no, in between. No. Okay, no, I add something that you don't have. Ah, so okay, we, we so we no. have we have to do the presentation again next week with the added slides. Okay, sorry, <laughs> because I thought I could. Okay, never mind. Nature removing a veil. It's a. I put a picture of uh, Isis. You know mm -hmm. that the, the the goddess of beauty, and uh, I took that picture from, you know, uh, from the Middle Ages where they were showing that today, if we go behind what we see with our eyes, with, with our imagination, we see beautiful girl and beautiful things, no? Mm -hmm. 
Thank, thank you. I, I, I was all the time trying to see a cube in this in this image, and I wasn't able to. I thought there's, well, there was something wrong with my brain. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, it's okay. So we will come back to um, an experiment later, maybe, mm -hmm. or I think. So if to summarize where I am now, but it's only hypothesis. I feel like a researcher, you know. So I feel osteopathy today, you know, like following a biopsychosocial model, you agree? Mm -hmm. To add empathy, that a new vision of anatomy in the living, you know, I I did a lot of experiment with Jean-Claude Gamberto to show what on the living, that's the anatomy of the fascia. Yeah, it's absolutely not only a con connective tissue, but it's a constitutive tissue. Then the anatomy that I think still was speaking of is not only the anatomy on the cadavers, but it's anatomy of, anatomy of relations. It's anatomy in the living, and that's completely different. Mm -hmm. We need to learn on cadaver, but you know, if we add life, it's so amazing, so different. And matter is only 2% of the structure of what we are. 98% of our perception when we are with a patient is only movement, you know, and motion, energy. And we have to understand osteopathy as a coherence in your biofield. So the body is trying to say something new today. That's what I feel is, uh, is amazing. And that's in relation with consciousness and consciousness is coextensive with life. Next, oh, that's a, uh, a study on PubMed. You can, for those interested, you can look uh, look for it, about saying that the in, this interoceptive awareness, that you know, the way the way we are, we see, we perceive, we feel that enhance, you know, our uh, interoception, and that enhance also the neural activity, and it's augmented if you add empathy. You know, that's, I feel that's an interesting article for us. Mm -hmm. But maybe you know it already. So that's included in the biopsychosocial model, going from evidence-based practice to experience-based practice. Next, that's another article from the IJOM, Refining the biopsychosocial model for musculoskeletal practice by introducing religion and spirituality dimension into the clinical scenario. So you know the authors, you know, mm -hmm. yes. Raphael, Jerry, and Francesco. You know, and uh, it, they are really evidence-based uh, uh, researchers, and you know, I'm so happy that they go on that direction mm -hmm. and that because you know we are finding a link a link between all these different dimensions may, may i may i ask you brief, briefly here uh, th this is a strong uh, trend in osteopathy and also in manual therapy medicine in general that uh, we all should work more in the biopsychosocial domain Yes, I, I think so. I, 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 th I think this is really important and I think it's a part that we neglected for many, many years and that was missing. Yes, but I, but, I but with, with, with let, let, let me just finish briefly. Uh, I feel that uh, some of the people who are promoting it are overdoing it. And if you listen to a lot of proponents of the model, uh, you, you will think, well, maybe we should become psychotherapists and we should not work manually anymore. 
and it seems they sometimes they sometimes act as if there was no value in manual treatment or let's say in specific manual treatment at all. It was mm -hmm. all just biopsychosocial. What do you think about that? I think we don't need to be a psychologist and we don't need to be, you know, that to become this. I'm just using as a manual therapist, as an osteopath, I'm just using tools, but I, I don't, I will come back on that concerning emotions. You know, I work with emotions, but I'm not a psychotherapist. I'm not a psychologist. I think we just have to, to be open to this, to these different elements that are present, you know, and to add them. And I, I really, I remember very well, if you, if you're okay with that, Raymond, you know, mm -hmm. in, in Schlagenbad, you did a presentation years ago. <laughs> I, I remember that one, yes. You remember that mm -hmm. presentation? Yes, yes. Wie, wie sage ich dem Patienten? How do I tell it to the patient? Was exactly. the title. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that was so important for me, you know. Thank you. So, and I think maybe you can publish on this because, uh, you know, that was already you were involved in that change, you know. And uh, um, I don't remember the year, but it was a few I, years ago. I remember you asked the question afterwards. It was something with a, what, what, what if a good looking female patient asks me to come back for more treatments, although I think she doesn't need any or something along those lines? Yes. Very difficult question. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Next. So I just tried to put a triangle. I like triangle, you know, and seeing that osteopathy today is the evidence-based practice is important, but also experience-based practice and leading to an existential or, or spiritual opening. You know. So next, osteopathy is looking for health, self-healing process. The emotional level uh, will come on it is the waves of the ocean. Get rid of the past of the past. We are no more on the linear time. The past is not important. You know. But happiness begins in ourselves. That's why I think we need to start by ourselves and then people come to us. And I I believe we can change the world doing this. And I remember maybe not too many people remember there were a song from a group called Ten Years After with a, a guitarist called Alvin Lee. And the yes, song, of course we remember. And the, the song was We Can Change the World. Just uh, if people are interested, go on YouTube and see that song. It makes me cry every time I listen to it. We can change the world, but we don't know how to do. That's a song. Yeah. And then every moment, it's a new beginning. No one can dive twice in the same water. So I just wrote an article on the fertility of the concept in osteopathy. It's mainly what, what I've just said. So if people are interested, we, we can maybe translate that article in German if you're interesting. And uh, maybe you go next. So to, on the fecundity of the osteopathic concept, the same article. You know? mm -hmm. And I put a picture of two hands, men and women, black and white, on polarity. Mm -hmm. And then I put a picture, sorry, it's for my ego, a picture of the magazine you know, where this article has been published. You know, that's uh, the Osteopath magazine. But if people are interested, I can give it to you about the fecundity of the concept on, on osteopathy. Mm -hmm. Maybe if you send me the article, we can at least share it in, uh, with, with the people who speak French right away. Yes, sure. Okay. I that do that. Nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I put, but I think it's already uh, 45 minutes, you know. Mm -hmm. and I, I, I think if we I come to an end slowly in the next four or five minutes, whenever it works for you. So, yes, maybe 
we can go to the end and if people are interested maybe i can continue uh, another another week or another yes year. Why, why not why not it 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 seems <laughs> it seems we will stay at home for quite a while longer so, so maybe we can do that uh, i would be maybe happy to have you again you go to the end i'm not going to speak of emotions yes. mm -hmm. things just to do an exercise What's this? What's the slide you want to see? The last one. It's uh, um, meditation. You have a meditation? Yes, a with text. A te with text. You have meditation? Yes. Okay. Number seventy-seven. Maybe <laughs> I don't know. And just I, I want for people who are listening, if they just want to see, just do an, ex, an experiment of these dimensions that everyone knows already. It's a kind of being aware of oneself. Can you just be aware of the way you're seated? I hope you're seated. Maybe some of you are lying, I don't know. But, you know, just seated, feel the way you're grounded feel the way how your feet are, the connection between your feet and the ground and the earth and down from the earth, you know, going to the mineral part of the earth and we need all these minerals to be inside our body and then Deep in the earth, we are connected to the magma, the red, powerful magma that we can see on volcanoes. Feel the power of that energy, red from the earth, hot, and we can breathe in our belly, breathe in the Tantien, the Ara, that place where women carry our babies you know and put that strong part in our grounding and then just be open by the top of your head you relax the chin to the chest a little bit to relax the neck and then feel that we are suspended by the top of the head suspended to the light coming from above like the cycle like a lotus or or the the orus in egyptian the gold orus or like the saint in the christian uh, tradition and you can link the grounding the opening into the rib cage. Feel the way you're breathing, the lungs, the pleura, the air coming in into the lungs and the pleura, and the connection with the heart beats. You can put your hands on your chest if you want to feel the heartbeat or on the carotid or on the pulse and feel the coherence between your breathing, the heartbeat and what's going into your mind. Let space come in. Feel the arterial circulation, the blood cells coming from the bone marrow, the capillaries, the venous return, and you can feel in the arteries, the movement 
of the blood like a vortex. Doing a figure eight movement, but in the middle, in the center of the artery, it's not moving. You find the stillness of that fifth dimension in the center of the artery. And feel now how your environment is changing. Maybe it's clearer. Maybe you feel other sensations. Just open yourself to the dynamic stillness. in relation with the next slide, Raymond, with the unity, mm -hmm. with your mind, non-moving, in connection with the eternity. That's the way I understand osteopathy today. Thank you. Thank you. And I put a few pictures after about the essential laws, essential time. All these are coming from Walter Russell. And you know that Walter Russell was a very, very close friend of Sutherland, mm -hmm. of William Garner Sutherland. And uh, he inspired Sutherland. But I don't know why Sutherland never spoke of him, but they were close friends. Like, uh, uh, the, you know, still didn't speak of the people who influences him, and uh, also the, uh, Roland Baker uh -huh. also didn't speak of the the guru that he is buried uh, next. Yeah. I I really think this is a this is a pity because it seems that uh, still in Sutherland, like we all, they learned a lot from other people's books and from other people's teaching. I, have, I don't know if you have ever looked at Emanuel Swedenborg, uh, so, yeah, and, yeah. and a, a philosopher who, who wrote a book about the brain, I think 150 years before still, and it, a, a lot of his ideas are really identical to what still was writing. So. Sometimes I wonder if he was just copying things or at least using ideas that Swedenborg had already described. I think that they said that uh, still he said that he, he didn't invent anything. Uh -huh. He said that any, everything was present, but he just had the idea to put them together. Yes, and, uh, yes. Good. So okay. thank you very much. This was a very thank nice you. presentation. And I, even after knowing you for so long I, I, and, and working with you so so closely in, 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 in Woho, in, in the board of Woho for many years, I heard things today about your life that I didn't know. So oh. very nice. Thank you. And okay. I'm, I'm ready to hear from you too, <laughs> from your life too. I will just maybe that's a topic for another for another time when you interview me. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, but but not in French. Pas, pas en français. Mm. <laughs> uh, let me let me check with my brother if uh, there is questions on the chat. Okay. Uh, do do we have a chat? Is there anyone typing anything? Okay, so either no one has got any questions 
or our chat does not work. We don't know. Maybe we give the people a little more time. There is a little time lag between what we talk and what they hear. Okay. So let me switch back away from your slides. And one question, Bruno, is uh, what does your daily meditation uh, practice look like? Do you meditate every day? Do you do yoga? Do you do Tai Chi? Or just mm -hmm. meditate on your Dantian? What do you do? Every morning I try to do some yoga at the very beginning. You know, I have a, a routine of uh, sun salutation, that kind of exercise in the morning you do. And then at the end of it, I do meditation. And uh, also I'm Christian, so I like to read uh, part of the, of, the, of the Bible every day, you know, and to think of it because I think there's nice element to understand otherwise these days also i'm following on the on the internet uh, uh, meditation from deepak chopra mm -hmm. it's, uh, he, has, you know, he has done a lot of very nice and interesting programs exactly mm -hmm. so these days i'm on a program i have it here it's called deepak chopra meditation mm -hmm. you know, dot fr and it is it on uh, you know on time so I like this meditation on time, but it depends on the moment. But I try to, to spend one hour every morning between yoga and meditation, I mm, think. That's impressive. And, yes, and I, otherwise I try to swim once a week, you know, and, uh, yeah, and be in the nature. And uh, that's, that's my routine. Thank you. Other questions? Thomas Lieb has said, Tai Chi, but thank you for the great presentation and the meditation. Never felt my blood swim like that before. Mm -hmm. And noch, thank you very much. Other people just thanking you for, for the presentation and for the meditation, saying they felt very special, they felt their bloodstream very well. And oh, other, other, others just saying thank you. Oh, thank you. Good. So let's close with that. Pleasure to have you as my guest here in in the cafe, in the Still Point Cafe. Thank you for the invitation. And we'll continue the discussion, uh, continue the talk, maybe on another occasion. Okay. You're welcome. Herzlichen Dank für alle, die heute dabei waren. Wir haben morgen ein weiteres Programm. Es geht morgen weiter mit der Monika Ebner, wieder auf Deutsch, wieder hier im Studio. Und dann geht's, da geht es um Stress, da geht es um Möglichkeiten, etwas dagegen zu tun. Da geht es dann äh, um die Nebennieren, um Dinge, die wir durch Meditation oder durch Ernährung oder durch Änderung unserer Gewohnheiten tun können in Zeiten wie diesen und Dinge, die wir auch unseren Patienten raten können. Vielleicht sehen wir uns morgen wieder, es würde mich freuen. Wir werden voraussichtlich auch morgen wieder auf YouTube sein, aber ihr findet den Link auf der Website. Schönen Abend, Dankeschön.